YouTube, this is Adam Noyce of AN Productions. Welcome to this episode of the Godzilla Vlogs, where we talk about anything and everything Godzilla. 1970s Toho, a topic I like to discuss in detail. Well, let's bring it up again, ladies and gentlemen. 1970s Toho was in desperate need of money, and I swear this will tie in to the discussion we are talking about today, and that is the tragedy of Yoshimitsu Bano. If you want to know in great detail what was going on in Toho, not just Toho, but really all of Japan's film industry at the time, look up, you know, either my review for uh, Space Amoeba, which was part of a Shiro Hanathana, or watch In Defense of Godzilla's Revenge. But in brief, television was killing the Japanese movie world. It was utterly st strangling them, and they were in desperate need of money. And even by 1971, which is primarily when the year we're going to be talking about in this video, even the major Japanese studio, Daie, had actually gone under, uh, which had sent many Japanese studios around the country into a complete mass panic. People knew that Daie was in trouble, don't get me wrong, they'd known that for a while, but they didn't realize that they were going under. Daie was one of the first Japanese film studios to really be completely consolidated and formed. So when it went under, it really sent producers and backers of Japanese studios into an absolute frenzy, uh, which is detrimental to the film industry, but yet utter popcorn for people like me. So Toho needed desperately a quick way to make money, and they saw Godzilla as a way to do this for really cheap. They can make these movies quickly, they can make them cheaply, and they were relatively successful. Though by the end, by the mid-1970s, that certainly wasn't so much the case. So Tomiyuki Tanaka officially brought back Godzilla from full retirement with Godzilla vs. Hedorah, directed by and written by Yoshimitsu Bano. Now Godzilla vs. Hedorah I do call a reboot, or a basic reboot, of the Godzilla series because it was originally supposed to end with Destroy All Monsters and I do not consider Godzilla's Revenge an actual Godzilla movie considering that Godzilla doesn't actually exist within the realms of that film. It is entirely in the mind of the child Ichiro. So this was the first Godzilla since 1968. So it's been a few years. Tomiyuki Tanaka wanted Godzilla to start anew and looked for younger directors that showed promise and would work for cheap. Honda had quit Toho by 1971 with the release of Space Amoeba. So he was looking for somebody else and he chose Yoshimitsu Bano. Yoshimitsu Bano was never given the chance he so deserved. He was a hard worker and he was a second unit director for many Kurosawa films. Hidden Fortress, The Bad Sleep Well, and Throne of Blood to name a few. Uh, he had come up with the idea for Hedora uh, much of the same way that Tomiyuki Tanaka did with Godzilla. Tanaka came up with the idea for Godzilla when he was flying over the wreckage of Hiroshima. And that's when he came up with the idea of what if a giant monster came up and did this. Bono had a very similar experience, but Bono instead was flying over a city and actually walking through a city where he could not even see the streets below. All he could see were the towers. They were so polluted. And so he came up with the idea of Hedorah, the smog monster, which is one of my favorite kaijus of all time. Bono was always a fan of Godzilla, especially the original. He considered the original 1954 film directed by Ishiro Honda a complete and total masterpiece of Japanese cinema. Not just science fiction cinema, not just kaiju cinema, but just an absolute masterpiece of cinema in general. He was a giant fan. He wanted to make something similar with Godzilla vs. Hedorah, but for a new generation. Because by the time the 1970s had rolled around, it was an entirely new generation of Japanese people watching movies and watching television. He wanted to make Godzilla much darker and more interpersonal than before. He was influenced by the advent of the drug epidemic and the pollution epidemic, and combined the two to create the idea of Godzilla basically on a fever dream, which is a very cool and unique idea. Say what you will about Godzilla vs. Hedorah, but you can very well say that that movie is very, very unique. He was given several parameters, though. He wasn't just given a free ride. Godzilla needed to still be a hero, which Bono actually agreed with. He wanted Godzilla to serve as sort of the good guy, while Hedorah was the pure evil horribleness that the movie desperately needed. And also the film needed to adhere to children, which Bono did not want, but he agreed to it because he wanted a chance to become a true director 
as well as recognized in the Japanese film community. He was basically an ambitious young man at the time. Well, he wasn't young, but he was an ambitious man who wanted to make a name for himself, so he agreed to the idea. It is also said that Bono came up with the idea for Godzilla to fly on the spot during that infamous scene that you don't see every day, and which is a scene in Godzilla vs. Herodora that I do not defend at all. It's one of the very few times in that movie that I do not defend it at all. I defend Godzilla vs. Herodora quite feverishly. It was not only my first Godzilla film, but it is also my fourth favorite Godzilla film, and I mean that genuinely with no real nostalgia capturing me at that moment. But I think it was Yoshimitsu Bono really thinking about what Tanaka wanted. If he didn't do what Tanaka wanted, it would crush his cr chances of making a career, which is ironic because Tanaka wound up crushing his career anyways, but we'll get to that a little later. Bono, however, was not a good writer. He wrote Prophecies in Nostradamus in 1974, and if you, in case you haven't listened on a couple of my other videos, in brief, I think Prophecy of Nostradamus is one of those visually stunning movies with an absolutely terrible script, and that was primarily written by Yoshimitsu Bono and has his style all over it. I do not believe Bono is a very good writer at all. But he worked better with other people, like in Hedora. It helped that in Godzilla vs. Hedora he had a very experienced writer working with him, and that man was Takashi Kimura, who wrote a lot of the darker Godzilla movies, as well as films such as Rodan, which is probably Ishiro Honda's darkest film since the original Godzilla. It was actually Honda who recommended Yoshimitsu Bono work with Takashi Kimura, uh, and Takashi Kimura was a very pessimistic man. Listen to my review with Patrick Galvin on Matango, uh, Attack of the Mushroom People, on a show Honda Thon if you want to know more about him. However, working with Takashi Kimura on this movie was a perfect decision because Kimura was a dark, pessimistic individual. Though a member of the Communist Party, absolutely hated people. He did not believe in people, he just believed in individuals, which makes me wonder why he was a communist in the first place. I mean, if you watch his movies, such as War of the Gargantuas, Frankenstein Conquers the World, uh, you know, movies such as that nature, they usually have a, a dark undertone or a dark current to them. And oftentimes, Anant Takashi Kimura also has the monster be the tragic character, which I do believe Hedor is a tragic character because of how horrible, horribly disfigured he is as a being. Though this isn't a review for Godzilla vs. Adora, so I won't necessarily really get into why. However, there is something that Bono absolutely excelled at in this one movie in which he directed. Bono has an amazing visual style, and he made a style for this film unlike any other Godzilla director has. Instead of going with a standard style like Ishiro Honda and then Jun Fukuda would eventually adapt and so on and so forth, he went almost experimental. He went for more of what would generate emotion rather than blatantly showing it so it became much more interpersonal than expressionistic, if that makes any sense. He did this through the use of music, colors, and even strange camera angles. And on top of that, Yoshimitsu Bono had, le had much less to work with than Honda ever did, even on Honda's worst days and even on Godzilla's Revenge. Hadora only had one crew for both the actors, the live-action stuff, and the special effects. Before this, there were usually two or three if they were really tight. He also only had 35 days to shoot the entire movie, being special effects and everything, uh, which is almost as bad as the Shiro Honda when working on Atragon, though Honda had actually four crews working at the same time. It is sad that Bono never got the chance to become a great director like I think he could have been. His style was so out there and so different that it worked. His tonality and his style was so much darker and new in tone than any of the Godzilla films that came before him with the exception of the original. And it's even darker than a lot of the films that would follow. It, it's even, it's, it's more visually strange. Godzilla vs. Adora is, is, is the most unique, in my opinion, out of all of the Godzilla movies because of how strange the style is. It was so experimental, seeing what they could do with nothing, and that was Yoshimitsu Bono's strength. So nothing before Hedora and nothing after Hedora ever really looked the same, or never really was the same. You know, you can look at a Godzilla movie and get the generic idea that this is what a Godzilla movie has, this is what a Godzilla movie does. Not with Godzilla vs. Hedora. Godzilla vs. Hedora takes those tropes and throws them out the window for the most part, and that's what makes it so utterly unique. It's even uh, down to the, the creepy and atmospheric score by Richiro Manabe, which I will always hail Richiro Manabe's score for Godzilla vs. Hedora. It's not a pleasant score to listen to at all, but in context of the movie, it works 
brilliantly. It is why Hedorah stands out as... Uh, it stands out from all the other Godzilla films, and why it is heavily divided amongst the Godzilla fan community. Many people absolutely detest Godzilla vs. Hedorah and will just spit bile at it over and over and over again. Other people, such as myself, will absolutely hail Godzilla vs. Hedorah and even go as far as calling it a masterpiece of both surrealism, existentialism, and just a Godzilla film in general. Hedorah just looks different, it sounds different, acted differently, it's just different. So we're kind of rightfully so that it is heavily divided, and a person like me, I'm attracted to controversy, I'm attracted to things that spark up debate amongst either fandoms or just in life in general, and this movie I absolutely adore, again, not just because it, is, it was my first Godzilla film. It was during the making of Godzilla vs. Hedorah and a few other films that Tomi Tanaka suffered a heart attack, but it was just around the time that Godzilla vs. Adora had wrapped up, and actually Tomi Tanaka, because usually he was the one to look at, you know, rough cuts of films and approve them or disprove them, actually had Ishiro Honda come in to look at, you know, Yoshimitsu Bano's rough cut of the film. As for what Honda thought of Hedora, we don't know. We don't know if Honda liked it, or I at least don't know. If somebody knew, please leave it in the comments and tell me. But I have no idea what Honda thought of Godzilla vs. Hedora, and I found no, or, or nothing to indicate that he liked it or disliked it, so. All we know is that he sent Honda in to look at Bono's rough cut of the film. At the same time, though, Tanaka was also having a bit of a mental breakdown at the, uh, because of how much stress he was under, hence why he brought a man named Fumio Tanaka to come on to work on films such as Space Amoeba, the Dracula trilogy, and, and several other movies, and Fumio Tanaka would actually work with Tomi Tanaka from this point on until Tanaka's death. Despite Hedora being this, this huge hit, not just in Japan, but also internationally, this was also the largest and most successful Godzilla film to be released in foreign markets since King Kong vs. Godzilla, by the way. Tanaka absolutely hated the movie. He basically told Bono, while he was in the hospital, that he'd never work in the industry again, not just in Toho, but the industry again, and that Tomi Tanaka made sure that Yoshimitsu Bono never worked again. Because of that, Bono was never basically worked again. Truly worked again. He did, he worked on a few things, but not very much. Um, he only co-wrote a few things, and eventually serving as the executive producer, one of the executive producers on Godzilla, vers uh, Godzilla 2014. Which, if you actually look at Godzilla 2014, it has a lot of Bono influences through the story, in terms of the idea that, you know, man v. nature, and, and you know, Godzilla's pure nature and everything like that. It's a very Bono thing. So Bono was actually in the movie quite a bit, even though he was only an executive producer. What happened to Bono was that Bono was brought in at the worst possible time, unlike Ishiro Honda. Honda was brought in at a perfect time in the Japanese film industry because it was basically a new, res uh, new renaissance there. A new renaissance. Japan had just been lifted from the occupation. It was a time to make movies and to make interesting stuff. Well, Bono had been brought in during the Japanese film industry's downfall, and I believe he could have brought more energy and fervor to kaijus in general if it wasn't for Tomoyuki Tanaka, which this isn't me shitting on Tomoyuki Tanaka. I have tremendous respect for that man. Things were over all of their heads. Tomoyuki Tanaka was not in the right state of mind when this movie was being made. Yoshimitsu Bono was basically given a shit show of a production, you know, it was just an absolute wrong time for Yoshimitsu Bono to try to break into the film industry. Bono's vision was just not meant to be, and instead we got Jun Fukuda to come back at the wishes of Tomi Tanaka, who wanted something more stable and less controversial than Godzilla vs. Hedorah. Uh, which, by the way, we had some of the best, you know, some of the most fun entries in the Godzilla series because of Jun Fukuda. You know, they're a lot of fun. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Gigan, and Megalon. Those are tremendously fun movies, don't get me wrong, but they were typical at the same time. They followed the standard Godzilla formula. If Bono had remained, I believe the 70s Godzilla series would have been much, much different, much darker, and probably something more like the early Showa Godzillas, but with a more radical visual flair due to both poverty and Bono's interest in existentialism. As a result, I truly wish he had a chance to make more movies and grow, like if he had his chance to make the sequel to Godzilla vs. Hedorah that he desperately, desperately wanted, because Hedorah, quite frankly, is the type of monster that could leave a door wide open for what you can do with it in terms of possibilities. Yoshimitsu Bono I, I see as kind of a tragic figure, 
who was basically created because of bad timing uh, against things completely out of his control and something much bigger than he could have really dreamed of. It was just a bad time to try to make it into the film industries, and unfortunately Yoshimitsu Bono, despite showing tremendous promise, got sucked into the downward spiral that was both Toho and the Japanese film industry, and that is why I believe Yoshimitsu Bono is an unbelievably tragic character, and why I absolutely love the man at the same time, because I believe Godzilla vs. Hedorah, as I said before, is another masterpiece, and I'm not afraid to absolutely admit that. So go on Facebook, like AM Productions for all up-to-date information there. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment saying what do you think of Yoshimitsu Bono or Godzilla vs. Hedorah in general. I love reading your comments, even if I totally disagree. I like the Godzilla saga for all up-to-date information on how those novels are going. And check out on Facebook some exclusive content, including my radio show, uh, Unrelated, Unwanted, Unneeded, or Triple U, just to shorten it up where we are actually on the radio for a live show. Do listen to that. So, anyways, in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AN Productions saying, Sayonara.